Good morning and welcome to worship. It is good to be together in the spirit. We're glad that you are here with us on this day when we're going to celebrate the confirmation of some of our young people. A few announcements to make this morning. Thanks to everyone who was a part of the youth group end of the season barbecue at the Mitchell's house yesterday. Thanks for really years of dedicated ministry on the part of those uh, folks who work with our youth. And then thanks to everyone who came out. It was just so nice to have a larger group of people and to be together and to do fun things. Um, when you get a moment, take a look at the back of the bulletin at some of the upcoming things that we have going. Um, we would like to have a few more people know how to live stream so that there's a little more flexibility for those who do know how already to go on vacation once in a while. Um, so if you would like to learn how to be a part of that, um, there are a couple dates planned or talk to Ben or to Kristen and we can sort some things out. If you'd like to be a part of Vacation Bible School, we could use a couple more teachers. And also we have some dates planned for gathering to build the decorations. We've got yoga coming up and more pop-up thrift store days. And on the 20th, we're going to get together to cook for the folks that are staying at the Life Center. Also, we're collecting things for the domestic abuse project where the needs are always just incredibly great. Are there other announcements to make this morning? Now, let's spend a moment centering ourselves in prayer as we come to God. And Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, don't center yourself in prayer yet. Uh, Virginia is coming up for our stewardship moment first. No prayer. It's good to see everybody here, especially since it's a really nasty day outside. Well, the first time I came through those doors back there was All Saints on Sunday, November 2016. Most of you know now that uh, Vidian Funeral Home recommended that Karen conduct my husband's funeral service the September before. She sent me a letter inviting me to come to that All Saints Sunday. So I did, and I stayed for the luncheon. I was immediately invited to sit at a table with people that I now know as longtime members, and I'm looking right at one of them right now. <laughs> and uh, even though they all knew each other very well, I was included in the conversation and felt so welcome. So I decided to come again. And I did, again and again, and well, you get the idea. And in September of 2017, I joined the congregation. Since then, I've become involved in a number of things. I helped to prepare meals for that aforementioned Life Center at 69th Street. You notice I say prepare, not cook, because I don't cook, but I do make a salad. <laughs> and I'll have several people attest to that fact. Uh, I also join uh, nearly every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon at the Joys and Concerns Conversation. And as a result of that, I have made some wonderful, caring friends, and you ladies know who you are. I also have the honor of serving as a deacon, and for the last two years, serve as their secretary. I grew up in a very welcoming congregation. And through moves and marriages and moves and whatever, I never found a good fit until now. This congregation at Marple Presbyterian reminds me very much of that congregation at 10th Street and Roosevelt Boulevard in North Philadelphia. The name of the church was First Christian. I do feel so welcome here. So if any of you, within the sound of my voice, whether you're in the room and visiting us today, extra welcome to you folks, or those of you who are watching online, do come and visit us. You're very welcome, and we'll make you try to feel welcome. We'll do our best. One last thing. I came because of Karen, but I stayed because of all of you. And now let us center ourselves in prayer as we come to God in worship.
Please stand and join with me in the call to worship. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There, there is no end to God's greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another. And shall declare your power. All your works praise you, Lord. And your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. And speak of your power. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all the flesh bless his holy name forever. Come, let us worship God. We pray that we with them may follow in the way of Christ, and in the last dwell in your holy city, sharing the inheritance of saints in light. Through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
As we join together in worship, we also join together in humility, acknowledging the depth of our need for Christ. And so let us join together in the prayer of confession found printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. God of mercy and majesty, you are slow to anger and swift to forgive. You have shown us the depth of your love. Yet we can be reluctant to love others who differ from us. You have shown us compassion and forgiveness. Yet sometimes we walk away from each other without concern. You've offered us hope in Christ Jesus. Yet we're tempted to lose that hope when life is challenging. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Create in us the endurance and character which help us trust in the power of your forgiving love. Amen. God is ready to forgive us, for God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Be at peace with God, with yourself, and with one another, through the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Pentecost celebrates the outpouring of God's spirit upon the church and the gifts we need to serve others in Jesus's name. Let us offer our gifts this day with grateful hearts and the generosity revealed in Christ himself. Come, let us receive our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. 
pray together. Generous God, thank you for all your gifts which bring us hope and joy. Bless the gifts we bring and the work with them to establish your reign in the world you love. In the name of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. In our tradition, we baptize infants and we make promises to those babies that we will raise them as a family of faith to know Jesus Christ and to be a part of this family. And then when they reach a certain age, it is no longer appropriate for us to make those decisions for them. And it is time to make those decisions for themselves. And we have some young ladies here today who started that process in 2020 and then everything shut down and went on hold and then stuck with us and stuck with it enough to come back and have a retreat where they did like nine months of class in a long marathon day. Uh, and thanks to the teachers and to them for, for choosing to be part of that. And then some of them have chosen then to make that step today and to officially join the congregation by confirming the promises that were made to them when they were younger. So I invite um, to come stand up here with us, Maura, Hannah, Paige, and Sophia. Presbyterian Church is governed first by God through Scripture, then through our confessions of faith, including the Apostles' Creed, and then finally, in practical matters, by the Book of Order. And far from being a dry book of rules, these guidelines are often a lovely statement of faith and of God's faithfulness. From, a, from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. And in response, our current book of order describes church membership in this way, and there will be no test. <laughs> membership in the Church of Jesus Christ is a joy and a privilege. It is also a commitment to participate in Christ's mission. A faithful member bears witness to God's love and grace and promises to be involved in the ministry of Christ's church. Such involvement includes proclaiming the good news in word and in deed, taking part in the common life and worship of a congregation, lifting one another up in prayer, mutual concern and active support, studying scripture and the issues of Christian faith and life, supporting the ministry of the church through the giving of money, time and talents, demonstrating a new quality of life within and through the church, responding to God's activity in the world through service to others, living responsibly in the personal, family, vocational, political, cultural, and social relationships of life, working in the world for peace, justice, freedom, and human fulfillment, participating in the governing responsibilities of the church, and reviewing and evaluating regularly the integrity of one's membership, and considering ways in which one's participation in the worship and service of the church may be increased and made more meaningful. In a world where so often we're tempted to build walls between each other, it also says, Congregation shall welcome all persons who trust in God's grace in Jesus Christ and desire to become a part of the fellowship and ministry of his church. No person shall be denied membership for any reason not related to profession of faith. The gospel leads members to extend the fellowship of Christ to all persons. Failure to do so constitutes a rejection of Christ himself and causes a scandal to the gospel. And so it is with great joy and after so much waiting that we welcome these new members to our family of faith. In faithfulness to Christ and in obedience with the most welcoming spirit of our tradition, we ask them only what matters most. On behalf of the session, I present Mora, Hannah, Paige, and Sophia for membership in Marple Presbyterian Church. The four of you together, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and desire to be a part of this family of faith? And will you be faithful members of this congregation living and proclaiming the good news of the gospel with us? Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> that was rehearsed, so. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for calling us to be your people and for gathering us together into the body of Christ. We thank you for bringing this brother, the, these sisters to us. Together we may live in your spirit and so love each other that we may have the mind of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we give honor and glory forever. Amen. And I have certificates to bring. After you've gotten your certificates, maybe uh, pose and smile so people who don't give you a Whoop, to my sorry. own kids, sorry. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's welcome them all. We're so very glad to be here. So thank you so much, and you can sit down. <laughs> I just want to take a moment. Um, this is usually the time of year where we um, celebrate our Christian education program, and I thought with confirmation this was the appropriate time um, to thank all of the um, children who are and youth who have participated in our programs, but also to thank all the adult leadership um, that makes those programs possible. Uh, as much as I wish. We could uh, just run Sunday school and youth group on children power alone. Um, it takes a lot of adult uh, hours and dedication uh, to really make those programs possible. I have had the honor of being the chair of CE um, for the session in this church. This is my sixth and final year on this round. Um, and I am so grateful to all of the adults who make what I do look like I'm doing everything. <laughs> um, these past couple years have been especially challenging with changing uh, situations and uh, not being able to be in person all the time. And um, I, I deeply feel that our committee has risen to the challenge and tried to be uh, innovative and try to come up with new ideas and just keep trying different things. Um, some things have worked, some things have not worked, but we never stopped trying and we will continue to keep trying and to try and bring our um, programming back to where it was uh, and, and further. Um, and in that vein, I need to especially thank um, my fellow youth group leaders who not only help me lead youth group, but also are some of the main people who help with all the other aspects of CE as well. Uh, and those are my husband, Ben Mitchell, Lisa and Nate Tanner, and Kim Wooden, who uh, couldn't be with us today because she's being celebrated at a different church. So um, uh, in addition to that, thank you to all of the adults who have helped with Sunday school, getting the Sunday school room um, re, um, redone over. We have, In the past two years, we have completely um, stripped down and repainted and Mac has filled ungodly numbers of holes and walls um, and our space is now beautiful and ready to receive um, our classes as those class sizes are smaller and hopefully will grow. We are ready to grow with them. Um, and then any adults who participated in um, VBS last year and who will this year, um, that's yet another fantastic event that we just can't do without a lot of adult help. Um, so I encourage anyone who is looking for something uh, to do that involves the children um, to get involved with VBS. Um, we have multiple options. We're really trying to be organized this year with the build schedule. So even if coming the week of VBS is not possible for you, if you want to contribute to it in a way um, that uses your uh, your construction skills, if you have any, or just muscle, because that's also good too, um, please check the bulletin. We'll have continuing updates on that. Um, and if anyone has any um, desires, requests, uh, interest in running anything for CE, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I've still got you know another six months to go, so I'm open to suggestions. 
And I thank everyone for their support throughout these uh, challenging years of this pandemic in, in the way that no one was expecting to have to deal with some of the things that we have tried to deal with and overcome. Thank you. Oh. And, and any children who wish um, may meet us in the back if they would like to participate in Sunday school rather than sit in the, uh, the sermon part of the service. But if you do not, that's also fine. Then let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your presence with each one of us. We thank you for the promise that we go through no challenge alone. We thank you also for the promise that you are especially with us when we gather to worship in your name. So we ask that you would continue to bless each one of us in this time that we give to you, and that you would then continue to remind us of your presence with us as we leave this place and go back into the ordinariness of our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then please stand as you are able and join in singing Seek Ye First. And if you want to find all of it, please turn to page 333 in your hymnal if you only want to sing the first half of each verse of it's an insert in the bulletin. <laughs> scripture lesson today is Psalm 139, verse 1 through 18. It's on page 545 in your pew Bibles if you'd like to join or read along. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them, has, none of them as yet existed. 
How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Thanks be to God. And then from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, beginning with verse 24. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as one of their scribes. This too is good news to us. In 2011, when our confirmation ladies were much younger and maybe not paying attention, a 20-year-old aspiring dancer named Claudia traveled all the way from London to Philadelphia to come for a surgical procedure. And it made the news. And older people among us will likely remember it. It's understandable because Philly has some really world-class medical facilities doing incredible cutting-edge work. It is worth traveling here for procedures. Unfortunately for her, though, Claudia didn't travel to HUP. She didn't travel to Penn Presbyterian. She didn't travel to Jefferson. Claudia didn't have an appointment with anyone who's ever been listed as one of Philly's top docs and then had their picture framed on the wall in their office. She hadn't been referred to them by a trusted primary care provider. Instead, as some of you may remember from the media coverage, Claudia came all the way from London for a medical appointment at the Hampton Inn Hotel near the airport. She found someone on the internet who offered to perform a cosmetic procedure right there in the comfort and convenience of her hotel room, and then paid them between one and $2,000 for their services. While one to $2,000 is real money, it's really quite a bargain for surgery. Free from all the rules and regulations and red tape that constrain major, major medical systems, the practitioner had absolutely no overhead costs. She didn't have to worry about the hassle of maintaining a sterile environment or being professionally accredited or using medical grade materials or having actual medical training. And then tragically, in her quest for beauty, Claudia went to great lengths to be injected with a permanent filler that's not medically approved in the United States and is actively banned in some other countries and had it done amateurly in a hotel room and it didn't go well. 12 hours after the procedure, she complained of chest pain and shortness of breath and was rushed to an actual hospital where she died the next day. The filler had made its way into her bloodstream with catastrophic results. The faux medical staff went to jail, but it doesn't help Claudia. It's too late for that. On the one hand, it's pretty easy to hear a story like this and feel very confident that nothing like that would ever, ever possibly happen to me. After all, she made some pretty avoidable mistakes. When tragedy happens, that's pretty much how I want every headline to read so that I can feel safe and confident in my life. I want the headline to say, completely avoidable bad thing happened to person nothing like you who made mistakes you would never make. That keeps me feeling pretty good. On the other hand, though, Claudia actually made some very human universal mistakes. She made the kind of mistakes most of us make all the time. She just did it on a more dramatic scale and got unlucky. Claudia came here in the first place because there was something about her appearance that she didn't like, made her uncomfortable, and she was desperate enough to travel halfway around the globe to try to make it feel better. And so many of us are dissatisfied with something or other about ourselves. 
most of us can identify with the feeling of seeming unattractive to ourselves in some way, big or small, or even to feel downright faulty. None of us can really compete favorably to the digitally altered, unrealistic images of beauty that bombard us from all sides all of the time. And then Claudia put her trust in all the wrong places when she felt that way, without, of course, realizing that she was putting her trust in all the wrong places or intending to put her trust in all the wrong places because she wouldn't have done it if she had realized it. Perhaps letting her dissatisfaction with herself cloud her better judgment. Perhaps too happy to get an easy answer she wanted to hear. Perhaps overestimating her own brilliance or underestimating her own vulnerability. Certainly putting the wrong sort of trust in a Hampton Inn, which never intended to take the place of an OR. And in the unaccredited charlatan she found on the internet who just didn't happen to be worthy of her trust and wasn't an actual doctor. And this is where life in this world gets a bit tricky. There are lots of places we human beings put our trust that are completely unworthy of us. Lots of things we count on that we just simply shouldn't. You know, someone, many someones, must take callers up on that laughable offer to renew their car's extended warranties. <laughs> if they didn't, scammers would stop fishing that way. And someone and lots of someones must be willing to help out those unfortunate but very wealthy Nigerian princes who keep sending us emails. If they weren't, the emails would stop coming. At some point along each of our journeys, even the most savvy among us has likely fallen for something or other that was too good to be true. At some point or other, we have likely been a sucker for somebody else's lie. At some point or another, we have likely trusted in something to get us through the day that turned out actually to be actively damaging. Whether it was a toxic relationship or substances or gambling or binging or too much scrolling for hours on end or our own personal quirky mistake that's just all our own. And then there are many more places that we put our trust that aren't intentionally or overtly damaging, that aren't somebody's trap to lure us over from London to a Hampton Inn. There are so many things we put our trust in that are lovely and good but that without meaning to, we push them too hard and ask too much of them. And like a decorative end table that does a great job holding a lamp and a beverage, but splinters to pieces if you try to sit on it just because it wasn't made for that. Without meaning you harm, without wanting to disappoint you, the end table just wasn't up to the challenge of pretending to be a chair instead of being true to its end table nature. So many things are that way when we ask them to be more than they are. Money is a useful and essential tool that makes so many things possible in life, but if you base your self-worth on having it, you'll be in trouble when the stock market crashes or the business folds or unexpected bills pour in and you just can't make ends meet. An athletic strength is a healthy accomplishment, but it is always one injury away from being unsustainable and at the very best dwindles away as years pass. There are many more end table-like options for our trust, wonderful things that can't always live up to the pressure to be more than they're meant to be. Academic achievement, prestigious college admissions, popularity, talent in one area or another, reputation. They all can splinter under the weight of life. They can all be washed away like houses built on the sand. Even people who mean well and want to do right by each of us have messy and inconvenient and human limits. Random employees at the places that we visit. But not just them, loving parents and close friends and church families. Pastor and author Nadia Boltz Weber built an honest confession into her weekly liturgy at the church that she led. A warning that if they stuck around, sooner or later she would inevitably let them down. 
We just don't have it in us to be anything other than human. So when all those things fail us and wash away like houses built on the sand, it can be particularly painful. While earthly things have always been unworthy of our unqualified trust, sometimes intentionally and sometimes not, while it has been true for long enough that Jesus taught parables about it, the last two years have really rubbed it in our faces. So many basic things we depended on and took for granted evaporated, at least for a prolonged period of time. Schools being open, the well-being of our loved ones, places of employment staying afloat, any remaining pretense that we're a unified people, being able to visit folks we care about when they're staying in the hospital. The young ladies we just welcomed into adult membership are admirably choosing faith and choosing community when so very many other things in life are being washed away like houses on the sand. And it would be so much easier to give in to denial or to despair or the distractions of other things. And they've been shoved into a level of resilience and flexibility and maturity and strength that most of us didn't have to face while already busy with the more than enough challenges of making it through middle school. In their public confession of faith and commitment to sticking it out together with us as a family, they are pointing us to this beautiful truth. And hopefully, in all our imperfection and stumbling, we are also pointing them to the same beautiful truth. That the houses washing away on the sand are only the first half of the parable that Jesus taught that day. And that we have a better option and a different option. And don't have to build our houses on the sand, even though so often that is the most obvious choice and it is what everyone else is doing, and it is the way of our society and of our world. But the parable continues. Jesus is a rock. When we can trust in nothing else at all in our lives, we can trust in what Jesus told us. When everything else changes and swirls at a pace that we do not enjoy, Jesus' example stays the same. When the world and all the people in it are discouraging at best, Jesus shares none of their weaknesses, none of their limits, none of their failures. If you put your weight firmly on Jesus, you can feel free to enjoy other things and other people for what they are without needing them to be more or demanding them to be more. If you put your weight firmly on Jesus, you can face whatever tomorrow may bring, whether it's stormy or clear. Jesus is a rock that can withstand any storm, any breaking news, any current events, any challenges that come to you personally or as a family, or as a community. Jesus' commitment to you will never waver. His love for you will never fail. Jesus is never out to trick you or to swindle you or to manipulate you. Your needs and your feelings are never more than he can understand, never more than he can handle, never more than he can accept. They will never stir up his own struggles, never change how he thinks or feels about you. Jesus' concern for your growth and well-being will always be perfect. His teachings are a constant, trustworthy old normal that applies just the same in all of the new normals that have come our way. There is no better place to build a house. There is no more secure place to live out the days of our lives. There is no better way to live in peace and in security and in confidence today and every day so that we can face whatever comes with peace, with joy, with courage, and with hope. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join in affirming what we believe with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I have just a few things as we conclude in prayer. Uh, first, prayers for Carol Robinson, who was not able to watch Paige uh, be confirmed in person because she's spending the weekend over at Bryn Mawr Hospital, but is definitely watching on her cell phone from her room because she would not have missed it for anything. Um, she'd had a shunt put in um, some time ago, not that long really, and then almost immediately was in a car that was rear-ended that um, damaged the placement of the shunt. So she has to have that repositioned and they need to make sure there's no infection going on in there. Um, what a long and irritating struggle. Prayers for Emma, who's recovering at home after just having a relatively minor trip on some stairs, but then breaking her knee and needing plates and screws. She you know, had just finished up the year at college and now is non-weight bearing and probably not driving for two months. Um, and prayers of thanksgiving for Kim, who as she described it, was driving and a deer decided it wanted to sit in her lap. So. Um, the car is really quite a disaster, and she had a bit of a concussion, but is mostly all right and feeling like miraculously protected that she was able to walk away with just scrapes and bruises, considering the severity of the accident overall. Are there other joys or concerns to lift this morning? And I actually see one. The Allisons are with us from Florida. We're so glad to have you here. Is there anything else this morning? Then let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that even when the news is discouraging, even when we go through difficult struggles, even when our lives have been disrupted and milestones postponed, that your plan is never thwarted that you remain present with each of us and love us and care for us and carry us in the midst of all things. And that when we have to change in ways that we did not want or anticipate, that you hold our hands and carry us through. Lord, this day we thank you for the young people of this congregation, for those who were old enough to make a commitment today and for those who are yet to reach that stage, for all the little ones that we haven't been able to see as much as we would like. We thank you also for those who have been away at college. We thank you for those who thought long and hard about this decision and weren't ready yet, knowing that they are still precious in your sight and beloved of us as well. We thank you for all of those that we have been unable to see as they've been in nursing homes or hospitals and who might be lonely today. We pray for those who are hurt or struggling in any way. And we ask for the power of your hope and your presence to be with them. We thank you for reunions, for seeing people we haven't seen in a long time. Thank you for the way that technology bridges distance and keeps us connected. Thank you for the Allisons being here with us. We thank you that Carol is able to worship with us from the hospital. We thank you for the healing you've worked in Carol's life, for your presence with her, with Emma, and with Kim. We ask that you would continue to watch over each one of us and to fill us with your strength and your hope. We ask also that you would teach us how to live more faithfully as your children and as one family united in love and care. We ask all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Then please stand as you are able and join in singing our closing hymn, Take My Life. that you might abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia and amen.